signs and wonders to sing this song loud after do something new in my life so, something new in my life do something new in my life. today hallelujah do something new in my life something new in my life, do something new in my life. Oh, yeah. Sing it again loud and clear. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new. Today, 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 today. Hallelujah. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Amen. Let go. That is what you want to look at very briefly before we start praying. Dealing with the enemy that will not let go. In the book of Exodus, chapter 5, it's very good to pay attention to this message so you know how to pray. Exodus, chapter 5. I begin to read from verse 1. Dealing with the enemy that will not let. Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? To let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let. What a terrible way of talking. An insult to the almighty God. Verse 3. And they said the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go we pray the three days journey into the desert. And sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Israel said unto them. Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron. Let the people from their works. Get you unto your bodies. And from that passage, Pharaoh now began to increase the bondage of the people that wanted to go. There are many people here tonight who have been boxed to a corner by the enemy. There are many people here tonight who are supposed to be flyers, but the enemy has demoted them. There are many people here tonight whom God has raised up as a person who will promote his or her family. But then the enemy has seen to it that the person is no longer a shining star. There are so many people here tonight who are very fertile ground, but the enemy has turned that fertile ground to a desert land. There are so many people here who, if things had gone normally and properly for them, they are not even supposed to be in this. They are supposed to be somewhere praising the Lord for bigger things. There are some people here today that if the Lord had not been supporting them with the small, small prayers they are praying, they would have died according to the calculation of the enemy. There are so many people here who are supposed to be very brilliant, but the enemy has turned the brain to something. I want you to understand that if you live in ignorance, you die. There is no middle ground. You either fight or you perish. There is no, I want to be half darkness, half light. You've got to stay in one section. While I was in the junior school, we used to have an inter-school, inter sport. I, our school eventually got to the final of the relay race. I was part of the relay team. And you know, I, for you to belong to the relay team, it means you can run very well. If you knew a little bit about athletics. You will discover that if you want to do a relay race, you need a very good first leg and a very good last leg. I was the last leg, so meaning that I could, could run very well. Six schools got to the final. Our school was one of them. We got to the pitch that day. The teacher in charge of physical education called the four of us who were to participate in the race together and gave us six strokes of the cane each before the race started. So he gave us six strokes of the cane each and he said, I gave you six strokes of the cane each so that you can have a very good idea of what will happen to you in school tomorrow if you decide to lose. Amen. So with hot back and under the anointing of the cane, we ran into the pitch. Get on your marks. Get set. Go. The first man took off. Again, 
under the anointing of the king. And he did very well. And our school, our, our, the students from our schools were very happy. They were clapping, St. John, St. John, St. John. The first man did very well. Gave the baton to the second man. Second man did very, very well. Gave the baton to the third man. Immediately the baton touched the hand of the third man. I was already bouncing and waiting for him. That We were told not to stand still. I was already bouncing on my feet, waiting for him. He took the baton all right. But as he moved, the baton jumped out of his hand into the bush. And I went into the bush. I was looking for it. And I was waiting for him. By the time he found it, the race was already... Of course, uh, I didn't go to school. <laughs> Beloved, your enemy shall lose the baton tonight. Your enemies shall lose the baton tonight. They shall lose the baton. They shall lose the baton. They shall lose the baton. In the name of Jesus. There are people here, beloved, their friends are very few and the enemies are many. Even amongst those few friends, they are quarreling. There are some here tonight, smiling is becoming increasingly difficult and crying comes very easily. There are many people here tonight, the enemy is already asking you, where is your God? Show us. Say you are a Christian. You are going to church. Show us your God. There are people here like that. There are people who are noticing that it will appear as if gates are closing against them anywhere they go. I want you to be ready to fight some war here. Fortunately, the Bible says, they shall fight, but they shall not. But it didn't say they shall not fight. If you had two boxers on the ring, and you place one man on the left corner, second fellow on the right corner, and you say fight. The fact that you got yourself into that ring meant that you wanted to fight. So if they say fight, please don't lose the war. But then if you fight and you win, the fact that you won the tournament does not mean that one or two blows will not get across to you. But the Bible says, they shall fight again, but they shall not prevail. There are people here, some powers of darkness are already congratulating themselves that they've had you, but you shall be released. I want you to understand that when you read your Bible and you begin to find some names, those things you read in the Old Testament is like a shadow. When you move to the New Testament, you find it. All those spirits that that is mentioned in the Old Testament also exists. In fact, those, so many of those spirits are still with us now. The physical Babylon is no longer there, but the spiritual Babylon is here. The physical Jezebel died many years ago, but the spiritual Jezebel is here standing. So when you read your Bible and you find Herod, Herod is gone, but the spirit of Herod is still. The spirit of Herod represents powers that killed Good things at infancy. When something good had just started, this spirit kills it as a rod. There is a spirit called the spirit of Goliath. The spirit of Goliath represents boasting enemies. Enemies that are boasting against you and are, and are saying that without me, you can't go anywhere. Without me, you can't do anything. Without me, you can't succeed. Boasting enemies. You find Absalom in the Bible. There is a spirit called the spirit of Absalom. Spirit of disloyalty, deception. So as you read these things, you find it. Likewise, you find what is known as the spirit of Pharaoh. The spirit of Pharaoh represents the power that does not want to let God's people. And this is what we need to seriously look upon and try and deal with if we live here. What does the spirit of Pharaoh do? The spirit of Pharaoh wants to determine for you how far you can go. He told the children of Israel, you can't leave this place, you stay here. The spirit of fellow Pharaoh represents spiritual stagnancy. The person is not moving forward in the Christian race. Where you were last year, you are still there now. The spirit of Pharaoh represents lack of spiritual commitment. When, you, when we say, when will you become a teacher in the house of God? When will you become a prayer warrior? When will you become a chorister? When will you become this? You say, well, I'm still watching. One year, I'm still watching. Second year, I am scientifically watching. Third year, I'm theoretically watching. Fourth year, I'm numerically watching. Are you a watch? That's the spirit of Pharaoh. It, the person just, no commitment at all. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The spirit of Pharaoh is that which puts a limit on your progress and says, this is how far you can go, you cannot go further. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The spirit of Pharaoh is that which cages one's children out of Christianity. Pharaoh said you can go, but let your family, your children be here. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The spirit of Pharaoh is the spirit of financial embargo. You can't go beyond this range. You just stay. That's the spirit of Pharaoh. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The spirit of Pharaoh represents destiny terminators. Those who will terminate the destiny of a person and the person is not moving. That is what Pharaoh tried to do with Moses. Pharaoh commanded that all male children should be destroyed. And Moses was almost going, if not for the destiny that God had for his life. 
What is the spirit of Pharaoh? The spirit of Pharaoh represents hardened enemies. Very hardened enemies. The Lord dealt with Pharaoh. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. Until the tenth plague, Pharaoh did not release. As many people as have hardened enemies here shall be delivered tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the spirit of Pharaoh? Is the strong man, evil strong man, fighting in many, many families. There are strong men planted there to destroy. And if you don't know what to do, the person ends up being a victim of the strong man. What does the spirit of Pharaoh represent? It represents stubborn pursuers. When he said, let me go, he said, no, I'm not going to let you go. And you know, Pharaoh pursued the children of Israel until he pursued them and entered into the Red Sea by himself. Amen. What does the spirit of Pharaoh represent? It represents any factor, whether human, spiritual, that is working against your moving forward. Anything that looks at you and says, well, you just stay where you are. You can't move further than this. That's the spirit of Pharaoh. I was in the University of Reading many years back when I went to do my PhD. In that university, PhD is normally three years. And when you finish the three years project, a professor will come from another university to give you a, a viva. He asks you questions. Normally, you are locked up in the same room with the professor, and your head of department will be sitting there, but the man will say, well, I'm here to see that tempers will not flare up. I'm not here to help you. He said, I'm not here to help you. We'll tell you straight away. There was someone who came for a PhD. He, he had been doing this PhD for eight years, so I met him. Anytime I saw him, I saw a spiritual entity following him about. So I ministered to him, surrender your life to Jesus. He laughed at me. He said, Mr. Man, you carried your Jesus from your country to this place? Anyway, after eight years of hard work on this PhD thesis, he had to face the examiner. He got to the examination hall. He sat down. This uh, professor sat down. And the professor asked the first question. And the first question was this. What is the title of your t- What did you work on? Beloved, he could not remember. Eight years. Could not remember. And you know, external examiners are always, <laughs> they can be very, very stubborn people. So since he could not answer the first question, this professor kept asking that question. What did you work on? What is the title of the thesis? What did you work on? What is the title of the thesis? And they went on with this one question for two hours. He started sweating. The professor said, you may remove your coat. He said, no, the coat is not the problem. Eventually, after about three hours of this man asking the same question, the professor said, well, I'm sorry. If you cannot even know the title of what you've been working on for eight years, I, I, I must conclude that you did not do this work. And so he failed. It was then he ran to Jesus. That thing that was monitoring him was the stubborn pharaoh attached to his life. I want you to understand this very well and know how to fight when the time comes. We prayed with a sister back there in Nigeria. The father had, uh, the father had only six wives. <laughs> and uh, our mother was the sixth one. Our mother was the sixth one. They had about 25 children there. She was the only one who went to school and passed. She was the only one who went to university and passed. All other children didn't pass any exam. They didn't go anywhere. So this singular lady was the one doing very well. Eventually, no, nobody ever married in that family. No one had ever done anything in that va- family that people came to congratulate them. So she was the first person to pass her degree exams and now to find a husband to marry. On the day of the wedding, the other wives, apart from her mother, the other five came to her and said, are you the only We allowed you to pass your exam. We allowed you to do this. We allowed you to do that. Now you want to marry. So okay. Let's see what happens to you. Right from the day they said that to her on the wedding day, her menstruation stopped. And the battle started. That is what we mean by stubborn Pharaoh. What does the spirit of Pharaoh represent? It represents sorcerers and magicians that have been assigned against your life. What does the spirit of Pharaoh represent? It represents arrogant enemies. Very arrogant. He said, let my people go. He said, I know not the Lord. Neither will I let you go. What does the spirit of Pharaoh represent? 
it represents inflexible aggressors. Not flexible at all. They are ready to deal the person. In many places of work, you have a lot of pharaohs working there who want to deal with people. What does the spirit of pharaoh represent? It represents raging enemies, always in a rage. What does the spirit of pharaoh represent? It represents unprofitable delay. Let us go. Hey, you will not go. Let us go. You will not go. It just ended up delaying them and delaying them and delaying. What does the spirit of pharaoh represent? It represents enemies willing to die rather than let you go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. When you are faced with an enemy that is not ready to stop unless they get at your blood, then those are not the kinds of enemies you joke with. And you must understand what we're saying. We're not talking about church going now. This is not religion. Many of us have been doing religious services for years. Where has it taken us now? Many of us have been made chair ladies, chair men of what this society, that society in the church is. What has it fetched? Many still go to church to dance away their Sundays. When they have enemies pursuing them, what have you gotten out of the dancing? So you have to be serious with your destiny if you must achieve your destiny. I was in, a, I was in France. We went to a church service like this. After the service, three African women came to me. And said, Dr. Lukoya, we'd like you to help us go to somewhere to pray for a lady. I said, okay. And they said, but we're going to leave 11.30 p.m. for that place. I said, it's all right. So by 11.30 p.m., they came to collect me. We went somewhere outside Paris to this building, about 15-story building. But when we got to the ground floor, as we were about to enter the lift, the woman who was leading our delegation said, uh, let us pray before we enter the league. So we joined our hands together. And the woman prayed like this. said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your son, Dr. Daniel Lukoya. We are taking him to this dangerous place. We pray, O oh Lord, that what happened to the last person we took here <laughs> will not happen to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I said, ah! Where are we going? Shout hallelujah. <laughs> they say, you, you shall see where we get there. And we went to the 15th floor. We entered the flat. There was this beautiful woman sitting down on the floor, gazing at the roof. She wasn't smiling. She wasn't talking. From looking at her, it was clear that somebody had been beating her up. The face was swollen. But or just gazing at the top of the house. So the husband was there. So we, we asked the husband, what was the problem? The man said, at midnight, she runs mad. And when she runs mad, she'll be throwing things out of the house. That she has thrown down the television set, she has thrown down the video machine, she has thrown down so many things. And she gets very aggressive. And that since he didn't, he didn't know what to do, so the best method to weaken her was to give her blues. So the, the, the swollen face and everything was inflicted by her own husband, trying to calm down the violence. Anyway, I went straight to her. I said, my sister, good evening. No answer. I said, say, I love Jesus. No answer. So I said, okay, say, I plead the blood of Jesus. She now looked at me. It's a point of correction. We don't plead the blood of Jesus. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I said, okay, no problem. Say, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I didn't know that it was already getting close to 12 midnight. All of a sudden, like a white lion, she jumped up. And jumped at the throat of the woman who was praying for me downstairs that I should not be attacked. We tried to disengage the hand from her neck. It was very difficult. And already I could see that the woman was fainting. So I had to do some very quick thinking. Because I knew that immediately she finished with the woman that brought me. <laughs> I was the next person. I quickly ran to one corner. I said, oh Lord, I'm in trouble. <laughs> what, 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 do we, what do I do? All of a sudden, I heard a voice. The voice of the Holy Spirit says, Son, 
bind the spirit of Olumbo Lumba and she'll be delivered. Sir. I said, but this is Paris, France. What is that kind of thing doing in this place? I was arguing. Holy Spirit said, you are still arguing. Look. So I stepped forward and I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of oh, that thing that I mentioned just now. Immediately I said that, the violence went down and she looked at us and said, what are you doing in our flat? What are you doing here? Who is this person? Who, who are you? Why did you get? She became normal immediately. That spirit was a monitoring power. The Pharaoh attached to our life. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken it by force. Many of us have been crying, but what has the crying solved? If crying was a solution to problems, the whole world would be a large crying arena. It's like the words of one of my former teachers who said, if beard signifies intelligence, the goat will have been a genius. <laughs> so crying does not solve any problem. Rather, the only language the enemy understands is what? Violence. So the battle with Pharaoh now went on. Aaron, God who said, tell Aaron to say this. Tell Aaron to say that. Amen? Amen. And whatever Moses told Aaron, Aaron will say it. Whatever Moses told Aaron, Aaron will say it. But at a stage, God now said, now Moses, don't talk to Aaron again. You yourself, go. Moses now began to talk. And the first thing that Moses did was to throw dust into the atmosphere, which became balls in the body of people when Moses now began to talk. What I'm trying to let you understand is this. The spirit of Pharaoh has no respect for delegation. You want to delegate your battle to another man to fight for you, you are deceiving yourself. Every man will eventually fight his battle. Fight your battle. It is when you are looking for People who will fight your battles for you, you run into a mess. Which people? There have been many sisters who went to pastors to pray. They came back with other stories. But if they understood how to fight themselves, they may eventually discover that they are a lot more spiritually better than the people they go to for prayers. The mountain of fire is a do-it-yourself ministry. Teaching your hands to war and your fingers to battle. So you must become combatant now to disgrace every power that wants to disgrace you. So Moses continued the battle and Aaron now kept quiet. When Moses continued for a bit, Pharaoh was still stubborn. Then one day the Lord said, Moses, Aaron will not talk again. You don't talk, you don't talk again. I am now going to pass through the land. There will be no more fighting. There will be no more going to Pharaoh to, ang- to argue. I am just going to pass through the land. And you know, when God comes to the battlefield, <laughs> there is no more battle. <laughs> when he himself comes there, and by the time God passed through the land of Pharaoh, he was the one that said, please just go. Go, go. He allowed the people to go. So one prayer we are going to pray a lot here at this meeting is that God should pass through the land of your enemies. Yeah. Should pass through should pass through. Should pass through the land of the oppressors. Should pass through the land of the tormentors. Should pass through the land of the pursuers. So once God passes through, the passing of God is the final kill that would destroy every oppressor. And when God wanted to pass through the land of Egypt, he didn't do it during the he didn't do it in the day. He didn't do it in the afternoon. It's at the midnight hour. The question is why why midnight hour? The midnight hour is an interesting hour in the spirit world. It's the hour where there is a high level of spiritual activity. It's the hour where powers of darkness are struggling to finish their quota for the day. It's the hour that is very, very dangerous. So if you say a pastor who says pray within 12 and 1, pray within 12 and 3, he knows what he's talking about. Midnight hour. In fact, Jesus said something. He said, well, how much more will God not avenge the voice of his saints who cry unto him day and night. There are some cries that are very effective at night. So when God moves in and he passes through, the Pharaoh will have 
no option but to release you and let you go. How many of you understand what I've said so far? Shout hallelujah. A louder hallelujah. So the fact that solutions to a problem is not visible now does not mean that that problem will never be solved. The fact that the way looks dark and dreary now, it looks as if there is no way out, does not mean that there will be no way out. I want to encourage you in this three days meeting that don't, don't give up at all. If you are at the edge of winning and you give up, you start from number one again. Go and start from the scratch again. You are not finished when you are defeated. You are finished when you surrender. And the fact that you are down does not mean that you are out. You can still come up again and fight. Now, the next question, which is the most serious question we are going to handle tonight. For a power to come against you and to succeed, there must be a door. What is the backbone of the spirit of Pharaoh? Under what situation will an enemy refuse to let go? What will a person be doing and the enemy will say, well, I am not getting out. They brought a sister for prayer. She was almost at the point of death. We started praying. We started praying. All of a sudden from my mouth, I could hear the voice of a man. And this one said, well, you want to set her free? Well, you have asked me to go. I will go. But she is a fornicator. I have been sent to kill her. But if you ask me to go, I will obey your voice and go. But she will commit another fornication and I shall be back. That's what the spirit said to me. So by the time the sister was okay, I said, are you a fornicator? He said, well, uh, it's with my intended. Intended. Said, Who is your intended? Say my fiance, my boyfriend. I said, whether it's intended or unintended. Sin is sin. The situations that may arise where the enemy will say, you are not going anywhere. I want to enumerate them for you one by one now before we start praying. Number one, when you stubbornly stick to sin, the enemy will not let you go. Many of us avoid the big, big sins, but if you are committing some small, small sins somewhere, the enemy will not release you. Because each time you cry, oh Lord, deliver me, save me. So how can I save you? But you are one of us. The enemy will say, I'm not going. You are one of us. You can't, you can't ask me to go. You are one of us. When you stubbornly stick to sin, the enemy will not let the person go. Sin will take you to places you never intended to go. Sin will create problems for you that science and medicine cannot solve. So sin is a disaster. Sin is a tragedy. That man by the pool of Bethesda had been there for 38 years. That is, the man was already by that pool before Jesus was born. And then Jesus met him there. And Jesus said, will thou be made whole? He said, well, I know, but I need somebody to put me in the water. When the angels come to trouble the water, I need somebody to put me in there. Jesus said, no, will thou be made whole? Jesus now healed this man. You know, Jesus now says something to him. He said, sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. Sin is a disaster. Sin is so bad that it took Jesus the son of God and hung him on the cross. His feet was above the ground. His head did not touch heaven. The, the creatures of heaven rejected him. The people on earth that he came to die for said, hey you you trust in God. Let that God deliver you now. So he was rejected by men, rejected by God. He cried, my father, my father, why has thou forsaken me? Because of what? Sin. So sin is a tragedy. As far as we stick to sin, the enemy will keep in place and will refuse to go. Will refuse to go. When you cry out, you demon of this, leave me. You this, leave me. The demon will say, okay, I will leave you, but I demand a, a telephone call. And the demon will phone their headquarters. Uh, calling the headquarters over, the headquarters will say, demon 330, yes, come with your message. So, well, uh, so so person is asking me to leave. Can I leave? So let's check our computer. Let's check our computer to see whether it's the kind of person you can leave. And they check. I say, ah, no, you can't leave. He just slept with one of our agents yesterday. So stay there. Sin is a disaster. I shared something in Lagos 
on Wednesday. There was this professor, professor of, uh, I've forgotten his field now, maybe geography or something. He came to me and said, man of God. I said, yes. Um, I, got, I got questions for you. I said, yeah. So, how many wives is Solomon married in the Bible? I said, 700. So said, very good. How many concubines? I said, 300. So said, very good. I said, now, listen to me. I do not intend to compete with Solomon. I just want one more, one extra. I said, do you agree with that or don't you agree? I said, no, the Bible is against it. I said, no. The professor, <laughs> the professor spoke to me roughly, called me a fanatic, said all kinds of things. I said, but why do you want to marry an extra wife now? He said, because the wife at home is not fashionable. I said, not fashionable after 32 years or so of marriage? I said, yes. Anyway, he went ahead, got this extra wife that he wanted to marry, but one week to the wedding, the woman died. The professor now went for the burial. When the professor got to the burial, he was surprised that they left the casket, the coffin open. And the priest was standing there. Immediately the professor arrived, the priest said, Well, uh, professor, you are welcome. Uh, before we bury this lady, let us, first of all, conduct the wedding. So before the professor could recover himself, the man has started reading, Beloved, we are gathered here today to wed this twin holy matrimony, which is a holy estate, blah, blah, blah. And he stayed there. And they did the wedding between the living and the dead. And they exchanged rings between the living and the dead. After the wedding, they now did the burial. The same professor was the one that put sand on the coffin. And that was the end. But right from that day, any time this professor woke up, he would see the woman. If he's driving, the woman would be sitting at the top of the car or the bonnet. He will be shouting, get out! Everybody will say, who is getting out? Sin will create a problem that science will not solve. Until he repented from his sin, that spirit kept following him. The enemy will not let go when you stick to sin. Please remember that one. Number two, the enemy will not let go if your parents have donated you to them. Many people here have parents who in their attempt to help their children put them into more bondage. Number three, the enemy will not let go when an evil angel has been assigned to you. I want you to understand that one too. Number four, the enemy will stubbornly not let go when your divine destiny is considered risky to them. There are some people the enemy considers very risky. Because he knows that once they get fully blown, they will disgrace the enemy. Number five, the enemy will not let go when there is a property of the enemy in your life. When you have something that does not belong to you in your hand, the enemy will not let you go. If you are watching a stolen television set, you will have high problem. You are sleeping on stolen bed, you will have backache. You are using stolen spoons to eat, you will have ulcer. Until you surrender their property. Number six. The enemy will not let go when you are living in a demonized house. If you stay ten years, six years, five years in a particular accommodation and your life is not moving, you better leave or pray or find out what happened to those who were living there before you moved there. There's some accommodation that there is no way you can live there and prosper because it's an altar of Satan. I want you to understand that one very well. The enemy will not let go if your name invites them. If by your name you invite them. I was praying with a lady and we prayed for a while. And the Lord said, why don't you ask her what her name is? And I said, what is your name? And she proudly told me, I'm Belinda. Now, Belinda means beautiful snake. So if you are called beautiful snake, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this beautiful snake. So if your name is bad... The enemy will not let you go. The enemy will not let you go if there are evil marks on your body. When I say marks, it doesn't, it's not physical mark that you can see. There are some people, anywhere they go, their presence invites hatred. People may be friendly with them to start with, but eventually they become unfriendly. It's a mark. It's a mark. 
If a market and somebody, uh, five men may approach you, the first one will not be serious, second one drunkard, third one already divorced seven times, and the fourth, fourth, fourth one I was just looking for somebody to have a good time with. So it's a, if it's a mark, the enemy will not let go. The enemy will not let go if you love your chains. Slaves who love their chains will remain in their bondage. If you love their, your chains, the enemy will not let you go. What are we going to do tonight? The Bible says, let my people go. So the only people that God said they should allow to go is my people. Let my people go. Let the people of God go, not the people of the devil. So the first thing you need to do tonight is to surrender your life to Jesus. If you want the enemy to let you go. Surrender your life to Jesus. We're not talking about religion now. Or going to church. No, 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 no. Forget that one. You could go to church and be an enemy of God. You can jump from the puppy to the to hellfire. So you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Be born again. As become a friend of God. Then you are in a position to be blessed. The second thing you need to do is to know your enemy. Know your enemy. Uh, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. At the same time, everybody ought to know who the devil is. The devil is wickedly wicked and badly bad. And God is a good God. You need to know that one. There's no point uh, if you train a soldier, give the soldier a gun, and the soldier does not know the enemy. Who will he aim the gun at? No one. He may even aim the gun at his friends. Because he does not know who the enemy is. Number three is this. Know your God. Know the God whom you serve. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The reverse is true. Those that do not know their God shall be exploited. The reverse too is true. So know your God. Then the fourth thing to do is to declare war against the Pharaoh. Which is why we are here tonight. So every enemy that does not want to let you go, this is denied to thoroughly deal with them. There are some dreams that you have that will tell you whether you have a stubborn pursuers running after you. The reason God speaks to us mostly in the dream is because many of us are too noisy. We don't have any quiet time. So the only way God can talk is when we sleep. So once you begin to dream of climbing and climbing and climbing and never coming to the end of it, you have a fellow walking against you. You begin to dream of sitting for examinations, you had passed. That's a fellow walking against you. You begin to see yourself in the old house where you grew up. That's a pharaoh that wants to return you backward, walking against you. You begin to dream of dead relatives. Dead. Many years ago, you are still seeing them fresh. They are communicating with you. There is a pharaoh that is running after you. You begin to see yourself climbing endless mountains. That's a pharaoh. That is working against you. God is telling you, you need to sit down and fight. Tonight, I want you to be serious with your prayer and see what the Lord will do. Let's rise up on our feet, please. Rise up on our feet, beloved. All eyes closed. But in case you are here tonight and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, you have a wonderful opportunity to do so tonight. Say, Pastor, yes, I can see. I must deliver myself from the hand of stubborn pursuers. Wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, you want to surrender your life to Jesus tonight, just raise up your right hand where you are so that I can pray with you. You have not done so before. You want to do so tonight because you are tired of what the enemy is doing to you and you want to fight back. But you know you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand. God bless you. I see that and God bless you. Those of you raising up your right hand, take a bold step of faith. Just come quickly to me at the front here. I want to be able to pray with you. Find your way quickly to me at the front here. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. 
No turning back No turning All the blood Of Jesus All the blood Of Jesus Hallelujah All the blood Jesus has washed by the blood. Those of you at the front, I congratulate you. Just bow down your heads and say what I'm going to say now after me. Say, Father, Father in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Before you tonight. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. Take control of my life. life. As from tonight, tonight, I say bye bye to the devil. I I enter into the kingdom of light. light. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. But before I do that, very quietly, you with your own mouth ask Jesus to come into your life. You see, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Say it. Amen. Amen. Wonderful God, I thank you for this, your children. I pray that your power, your glory will overshadow their lives. I pray that it shall be well with them. The decision you have taken today shall be permanent in your life. Today that you have surrendered your life to Jesus, any problem in your life shall vanish. And the Spirit of God shall keep you standing in his power. Your name shall be written in the book of life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes. You've taken the most important decision in life. Just follow uh, this uh, brother for a little bit. Just follow them. And you come back and join us later. God bless us. I did to follow. I have decided to follow Jesus not turning back all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely I will ever love and trust him I will ever Love and trust him in his presence daily. I surrender all. Hallelujah. I surrender all. Let's close our eyes, beloved. Within the next few minutes, the power of God is going to move in this place. Fire back! Every arrow of the enemy. Aha, aha, aha! Fire back! Every arrow of the enemy. Fire back! Every arrow of the enemy. Fire back! Every arrow of the enemy. Yes, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. Aha! Something is already happening. Something is already happening. Yes, be released from the bondage of darkness. Be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Bossa pokaya boshenta rabokola baraba. Aha! Fire back! Every arrow of the enemy. Continue. 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 Aha. Don't negotiate with the enemy. Don't negotiate. Don't negotiate. Fire back every arrow of the enemy. 
Fire them back. In the name of Jesus. Fire them back. In the name of Jesus. Somebody have that sister. Somebody have that sister. Aha. Mosekaya boshente ya boraba. Yes, yes, yes. Fire it back. Over there. Paseka pana ya boshente ya ba. Ribo kapa sente ya boshente ya ba. In Jesus name we pray. Yes, it's happening already. You know, I told you. I told you. I told you. Aha. That's right. There are five sisters here this evening. You have been struggling with terrible spirit husbands. And this spirit husband has planted so many materials in your body. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of that spirit as well is broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. In the name of Jesus. Aha. That's the first person. Aha. Amen. Yes. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. It's happening all over this place. And that is number five. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's put on the floor, put on the floor, put on the floor. Aha, Maseka Poshente, Raboko Sente, Yaboshente. Let's put on the floor. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Say this loud and clear. Every part that wants to waste my life. If I wear your shoes, I will be more aggressive. Say it loud and clear. Damn! In the name of Jesus. Every part that wants to waste my life. Command the power to die. To die. Yes. My aha 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 para sete ya bo shente ya bo aha 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 yes yes every power that wants to waste my life yes let it die let it die in the name of Jesus. Be released, 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 in the name of Jesus, be released. Aha, 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 name we pray. Aha. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we pray this prayer, if you are in this meeting, and sometimes when you wake up, you find scratches all over your body. As we pray, now just find a way to the altar and be on your knees here. You know, sometimes when you wake up, you just find scratches all over your body. Just find a way to the altar and be on your knees here. As we pray this prayer. You will pray like this. Pray it with only anger. Pray it with only anger. I fire back. Every arrow of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire it back. Every arrow of witchcraft. Fire it back. In the name of Jesus. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Just fire back. Every
every area of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. A fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. And fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. The fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. Fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Let's fire back every hour of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Mose kapoya bo shentera bo koraban. Riba kosta ponde. In Jesus name we pray. Every power that comes to scratch your body. I bury that power tonight. As from tonight. Whenever they appear before you. The power of God shall bury them alive. And right where you are. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I put you in the envelope of fire. So no power of darkness can touch your destiny. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Bring that sister back. I've not prayed for that one. Yes, come back here. Beloved, lay your hands on your head now. Anything planted in my life to disgrace me. <laughs> Can you say it loud and clear? Come out now! In the name of Jesus! Let that be a release of your anointing upon you. Let the yoke of the enemy be broken. Let that be a release of the power of God upon you. Let the yoke of the enemy be broken. In the name of Jesus. Anything planted in my life. Out, 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 out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Things are happening here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I say, sister, here you have a swell, a swelling in your body. Touch the place now. You find that that satanic swelling has disappeared. Someone. Thank you, Jesus. I someone at the back there. You have a heart problem. A heart problem. But right there where you are, the Lord is giving you a new heart. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. And that person who used to hear strange voices. These voices are voices of powers that want to make you mad. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And that yoke of insanity is broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. broken. In the name of Jesus. Every power that does not want to let me go. Can you shout it loud and clear? What are you waiting for? In the name of Jesus. Every power that does.
pastor want to let me go? What are they waiting for? Die, 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 die. Open as mouth and say it. Masikataya boshentera boshentera ba. Aha, aha, every power that does not want to let you go. Die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus. Bosapaya bokoshente ya borabaraba. Ribokopanda sapele boshente ya ba. Aha. Aha, 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 aha. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> oh, yes. Every Goliath in my destiny. Can you say it with only anger? I bury you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every Goliath. Command the Goliath to be buried. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Command the Goliath to be buried. In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. This next three prayer points will release thousands of breakthroughs here. Amen. But as I call this first prayer point, if you are in this meeting and you know the enemy has been telling you that you will die, just find a way to the altar and be on your knees so that that ordination of death will be cancelled. You are going to open your mouth like fire and like thunder. Every arrow of darkness Fired into my dream. Can you say it with only anger? Backfire in the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. Bosari Koposhentia. Aha, 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 aha. Every arrow of darkness fired into my dream. Command the arrows to backfire. To backfire. To backfire. Masikapoya boshente ya boko sete ya boshente ya baraba. Command the arrows to backfire. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at the front here, begin to breathe in and out through the mouth and through the nose. Do it very aggressively. Because some spirits are living now as you are doing it. That's right. Breathe in through the mouth and through the nose. Do it aggressively. That's right. Yes, you the spirit of death and hell. Loose your hood. 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 Every power that wants you to die, I command that part to depart. Depart. Loose your hood. Loose your hood. Maseka poya bo shente rabo kosente yaba. Ribo kosapende yabo shente yaba. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Every sickness that is unto death. Out, 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 out. That's right. Yeah, he's coming out. He's coming out. He's coming out. That's the power of God. 
That is the power of God. That is the power of God. That is the power of God. That is the power of God. Yes, be released. Be released. Be released. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. You shall not die but live. To declare the works of God. Tonight, every power that wants you to die is buried. Any enemy that has vowed to die instead of you to live, we command them to die. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. That spirit of death has been sent back to the sender. You shall not die but live to declare the works of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Two more prayers to release thousands of breakthroughs unto God's people. Every inherited poverty. Say it loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. Deal with the inherited poverty. Deal with the inherited poverty. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Jesus name we pray thank you Jesus amen there are some people here tonight you are laboring under curses issued against you by your own parents please if you are in that category find a way to the altar you know your parents actually issued curses on you and you are beginning to see the outworking of the curses they issued just find a way to the altar so that those curses can be broken. Just be on your knees at the altar here. Everybody will say this loud and clear. And pray this one from the bottom of your heart. Aha. Every cycle of hardship. Every cycle of hardship. Say it with holy anger. Every cycle of hardship. Then with a louder voice we say break. In the name of Jesus. Every cycle of hardship. Break in the name of Jesus. Every cycle of hardship. Command the cycle of hardship to be broken. Let it 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 be broken. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Break the cycle of hardship. In the name of Jesus. Look at the power of God. Look at the power of God. Look at the power of God. Aha. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Say thank you, Jesus. Those of you at the front here, you will be praying another prayer now while all of us pray, pray another one. Just say parental curses. Parental curses. Break, break by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. That's what I want you to be praying as well. All of us are going to pray this next one. Everybody say this after me loud and clear. Oh, star of my destiny. Arise and shine in the name of Jesus. Let's command it. Let the prayer causes be broken. Let this causes be broken. Let this causes be broken in the name of Jesus. Let this causes be broken in the name of Jesus. Let this causes be broken in the name of Jesus. This causes be broken in the name of Jesus. Let the curses be broken, let it be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the curses be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the curses be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the curses be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the curses be broken. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Mr. Kapoya Boshentera Bokoraba. Broken, all the curses be broken. All the curses be broken in the name of Jesus. All the curses be broken. All the curses be broken in the name of Jesus. This curses be broken in the name of Jesus. All these curses be broken in the name of Jesus. This curses be broken. All these curses be broken in the name of Jesus. This curses be broken in the name of Jesus. Let them be broken. Let them be broken. Let them be broken. Let them be broken. In the name of Jesus. Let them be broken. In the name of Jesus. All these stars of majesty. In the name of Jesus. Let broken. In the name of Jesus. Let them be broken. In the name of Jesus. Let them be broken. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray Lord by the power in the blood of Jesus let his children at the frontier be released from under any curse in which they labor tonight is the night of your breakthrough and there must be a turnaround breakthrough in your life in Jesus name we pray you may go back to your seat rejoicing the Lord has released you from this curses under which you labor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow is a deliverance night. Sunday morning is a deliverance morning. And in the evening, come here with your prayer letter containing seven prayer requests of something you want the Lord to do before this year runs to an end. And also come with a bottle of olive oil so that we can have a small anointing service. Raise your right hand to the heaven list now. O oh, thou that troubleth my, my Israel, the God of Elijah shall trouble you today. In the name of Jesus. Yes. O oh, thou that troubleth my Israel, the God of Elijah shall trouble you today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Say in my sleep tonight. Amen. In my sleep tonight. Oh God alive. I manifest your power. In the name of Jesus. In my sleep tonight, oh God, arise and manifest your power. I manifest your power. I manifest your power. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you believe that the Lord has done something wonderful in your life tonight, you pick a song of praises that you like. And with a loud voice, begin to sing it to the glory of the name of the Lord. Pick a song of praises that you like. Oh, great is our God. How great is His name. How great is His love. Forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I never leave you. Only trust in me. We say, Katea Boshente Rabo Kompoyaba. Riboko Saponde Kaya Boshente Yaba. Mariboko Saponde Kaya Boshente Rabo Kolaba. Mosete Yaboko Shente Yabo Kolaba. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, 
I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me in his blood. He's the King of kings. He is the Lord of Lord. Oh, he's the King. Jesus! 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 Yeah, he has you and he's a he is a king, he is a king. 